During or after an unforeseen disaster, you may be forced due to factors beyond your control to leave your home. And we've seen fires sweep into communities, giving residents literally a few minutes to leave before their homes are burned down. And we've witnessed the impact of war forcing people to flee. Regardless of the circumstance, whether it's man-made or natural disasters, you must establish a plan in place in advance to be able to have the critical items for survival on hand to move quickly. If starting right now, you knew you had five minutes to get your family out the door of your home with the gear necessary to survive for several days, could you do it? In this video, we'll cover these considerations and more, so let's jump in. Download the How to Bug Out Guide today. I'll post a link in the description and comments section below, or you can visit cityprepping.com forward slash bug out for a free guide to help you get started on building your own plan. If we haven't met before, my name is Chris, and on this channel we discuss emergency preparedness, aka prepping. As we stated at the beginning of the video, you need to have a plan to evacuate quickly. And I always advise people when it comes to disasters to have a plan A, B, and C. And in the context of this discussion, when facing a disaster in your area, plan A, the ideal option, is to stay in place, which is your home. Plan B is to head to a backup location. And for many, this is not really an option as having a dedicated alternative cabin or an off-grid setup, it can be expensive and financially out of reach for many. Plan C is to head for the hills to get out of Dodge or as we call it in this community, bug out. And this video is gonna focus on this last part, Plan C. Before we go through the specifics, there's a lot to cover. Let me acknowledge what many will rush to the comments section to point out. This is not the ideal option as being forced out of your home, it does introduce multiple challenges. And let me say, you're right, but it is a very realistic possibility that you must account for. And this video is not gonna gloss over this detail, but instead attempt to provide practical information to ensure you have the best chances of survival if you're forced to flee. And this is a comprehensive video and I'm gonna try and cover a lot of material very quickly. I will provide a more in-depth bug out download guide, which I'll post a link to in the description section below. So here's what we're gonna cover. What to grab, transportation options, where to store items you'll take, where to go, navigation, and then we'll finish up with some miscellaneous tips. What to grab. Let me start off by saying that these items I'm about to recommend are what I consider the bare minimum. Maybe you have a different list of critical items and I'd love to get your feedback as to what those are in the comments below. But if I knew I had a very limited amount of time, let's say five to 10 minutes, these are the items that I would recommend. The first is bug out bags. I've done several videos on building bug out bags and I'll post the newest in the description section below. In that video, I walk you through all the major categories to consider when you build your bug out bag for either an adult or a child. In bug out bags, they really serve an important role in providing you with the necessary items to keep you alive for three days. These bags have items ranging from shelter to food, sleeping gear to communication devices. Again, I would refer you to that video for a more in-depth breakdown. It's important that you have these bags on standby, ready to go at a moment's notice. Additionally, it's important that you keep the following next to your bags. Shoes or boots with the socks, preferably inside. Clothes, and you may not have the time to get these out of your closet. Personally, I keep mine stored in my bug out bag for this very reason. Water, I keep several five gallon water containers next to my bags that could easily be loaded into my vehicle. Critical medicine. If you have medicine that you need to take, be sure to leave a note with your gear to grab it and where it is specifically located in your home should someone else have to grab your gear. Important documents. Either keep these in a safe next to your bug out bags or have a note detailing where they specifically are in your house. A note about documents. I scan and keep mine stored in the cloud using a service called Dropbox. And you can also back up your data on a thumb drive. If you do go this route, be sure to secure it with encryption or using biometric encryption. Shelter. While our personal bug out bags do have shelter included, I do not currently have a tent in our bags as our climate doesn't really necessarily require it. Obviously, modify that depending on your area. Nonetheless, I do keep a tent on standby to toss in the car with our bags. Pets. It's a good idea to keep their vaccination records with your other documents. Additionally, keep a leash and a few bags of food and a collapsible water bowl next to your gear to ensure that your animals are taken care of. Security. When it comes to this item, I keep the necessary items in a vault next to my gear. 
But keep in mind that depending on the severity of the situation, local law enforcement will likely still be enforcing regulations or may not even be present and security will fall on you. Plan accordingly. Power production. This last item is optional, but at some level should be given thought. Most of the electronics, whether that's flashlights, radios, in our bags, they're rechargeable. And I carry a small solar panel in our bags as well. As shown here, there are several options on the market, powerful enough to charge your smartphone or flashlights or even a small battery. And if you want something a bit more powerful, something like an EcoFlow, Delta Max, a Jackery, or any other product on the market, they're gonna be helpful. If you are shopping these devices, I'll provide a link to a recent in-depth video I just released which will help you if you're in the market shopping one of these. One last note, if you're loading these bags in your vehicle, be sure to load them last so they are the easiest to quickly grab should you have to abandon your vehicle quickly, which leads us to our next point, transportation options. Let me start off by addressing the most common question, what is the best bug out vehicle? The simple answer is the one you have. For most people, there's three primary options. The first and the most important is some type of motorized vehicle everyone can get into quickly, such as a car, a van, or a truck. In our particular family's case, we have a family minivan and a 4x4 Jeep. One pro tip on your vehicle, try to get in the habit of keeping their gas tanks at least half full at a minimum at all times. And for us, we load the critical gear in the Jeep first as it has the most options regarding where it could travel should the roads become jammed and we had to abandon our van. And we take both vehicles to give us options. Remember, two is one and one is none. The next is a bicycle or a motorcycle. I personally don't have a motorcycle, but they definitely provide you with a lot more options regarding the distance that you can cover. For our family, we do have bicycles for each family member and a bike rack that fits on the back of my Jeep. So should time permit, I would add these onto the back of my Jeep. But if for whatever reason our vehicles were not an option, a bike is a great option as you can go places some vehicles simply cannot. If you do have a small child, make sure you have a small bike trailer or at least a seat on your bike for them. And speaking of bike trailers, these are great options for not only carrying a child, but critical gear that you may want to take. Bikes, they allow you to cover long distances with less effort than having to walk, which is our final point. Walking, it has its pros and cons. For the pros, it allows you to go places neither a vehicle or a bike can go. But the cons, they're plentiful. You cannot cover as far as a distance. If you're not in shape or you have an injury, that's gonna be a problem. And you're exposed to the elements when compared to a vehicle. And the calories required to cover distances, it's great, which necessitates that you carry more food and potentially water depending on your area. Speaking of which, having a cache of food, water, or other important gear along your bug out route, it could be critical to refuel you in the event that you have to walk to your final destination. And I'll post a link up in the cards above and in the description section below, which covers this in more detail. Where to store items to take? There's a few main considerations when it comes to storing your gear. Proximity to the exit of your home, or more importantly to your vehicles, temperature of the area, and security and OPSEC. So let's run through each of these. The first is proximity. A big factor in getting out quickly with your gear is having it accessible. If your gear is buried in the back of a closet far removed from the exit route of your home, it doesn't really do you good if you can't access it in time. As such, consider a closet, shelves, or a room that is closest to the exit. And for most people, they're likely gonna get in their vehicle when departing. Depending on where your car is kept, if you can keep the gear near it, this is really the ideal approach. I keep my Jeep in the garage, which is the primary vehicle I would load my most important gear into. And I have my office next to the garage, so I keep all my bug out gear on a shelf here in my office. And this really serves three purposes. The first is proximity, which we just discussed. The other purpose is that my office is temperature controlled, which is our second point. So why is temperature an important factor? Some items, namely food and medical gear that you have in your bags, they're just not gonna last as long in high temperatures. An alternative is to remove these items from your bags and place them somewhere cooler if you keep your bags in a warm area such as your garage. But I try to avoid adding complication and instead I prefer speed, which is why I keep all the items together and I store the bags in a place I can control the climate. A side note about breaking up the gear in your bags, if you do go this route, be sure to have clear notes with your bags as to where these separate items are stored. If you're in a hurry to get out, you will likely forget them. The other purpose for why I choose my office is OPSEC and security. 
OPSEC is simply short for operational security, keeping your information private. So in this case, I don't want people coming into my home to be aware of my gear. And when it comes to security, I want to, as you can imagine, keep the item secure. It's for all these reasons that I don't store my bags in the garage. If a neighbor were to randomly walk by when my garage door is open and they see all my gear, that really defeats the point that we just covered. Plus, my garage gets really hot in the summertime and I don't want to impact the items that I listed, which are food and medical items. Now, everyone's situation is unique, so use these points as more of kind of a framework and adjust accordingly. Where to go. It's important that you define this in advance. If you were to bug out with no defined place to go, you are merely a refugee. And the most likely situation is that if you are forced to flee, you'll typically go to a friend or a family member's house. And I would encourage you to have these items already defined on either a map or an app on your phone. And when panic sets in and you're fleeing a situation, you will very likely forget things that once you could rattle off the top of your head. For some, heading to a hotel either in your city or outside might be your first option. And I would encourage you to find a hotel that meets your specific needs in regards to the cost or other important factors like whether they'll accept animals or not if you have pets. And based on that, you may want to consider loading the hotel's app on your phone with your credit card information already set up in advance. Why is that? If there's a disaster, it is very likely that people will flood the hotel's phone line to grab a room. And if you already got your information stored with the hotel, hopping on an app quickly and reserving your room will allow you to do it much faster to lock in your confirmation. And apart from going to a friend's house or a hotel, always have other options lined up if staying in your local area is not a choice. I did a video a while back, which I'll post a link to in the cards above and in the description section below, that go over alternative bug out locations. And I cannot emphasize this enough. Redundancy. Always have a plan A, B, and C when it comes to where you'll go if you're forced from your home. Navigation. When it comes to navigation, let's be honest. Most of us are used to pulling out our phone and just simply loading an app. And look, there's nothing wrong with this, and we'll discuss a few important apps in a moment, but remember, our phone and other devices, they rely upon satellites to power our GPS devices. Something like a solar flare, a coronal mass injection, an EMP, or some other type of event could render these useless. And when it comes to our phones, most are probably familiar with apps like Google Maps, Waze, or Gaia GPS. And these apps, they can work if there's no internet or phone service. Your phone can still connect to satellites to determine your location, via the GPS receiver that's built into your phone. And if you have the map downloaded in these apps, but the internet is not available, you'll still be able to determine your specific location. And you would be wise though to download the map that is in your area between your home and the places that you would wanna head out to if you have to bug out. Now, let's talk about Google Maps first as it's probably the most popular. If you hop over to Google and you type in this phrase, how to download Google offline maps, Google, it does provide you a step-by-step -step instructions how to do that. Again, as we just mentioned, you still can use Google Maps even if there's no internet connection for the area that you're in if you have downloaded the map before the internet goes offline. Now, the other two apps that I referenced earlier was Waze and Gaia Maps. And those are both popular apps which, like Google Maps, will actually allow you to download the maps in advance. And of all the apps that we've referenced here, I would personally recommend that you at least get Gaia. Our scout troop uses this for hiking and there's a paid version if you want more features. And I often use this app when I do off-roading by downloading the map of the area that I'm gonna be going through when I'm driving in that area. Now, one device I often reference on this channel a lot is the Garmin InReach Mini. And I'll tell you up front, these are not cheap, but they're packed with several unique features. Like the apps that we just went over a second ago, you can download an app to your phone and then you can actually download the maps to the app and then this device via Bluetooth will connect to your phone so you can see the movements that you're when you're moving in real time. Now, obviously the other apps that we just went over, they can do the same thing. They have a GPS tracker built in, or rather the phone has a GPS tracker built in, which will allow you to understand where you are in relation to the maps that you downloaded. But the one unique feature that this has that this does not is that you can actually send and receive messages via text to a satellite. So if the internet in your area was completely down and you needed to communicate outside of your area, this is a way to go. And the last option on this point is a simple map and compass. 
And I did a video over a, about a year and a half ago, which covered the basics of this. And I'll link to it in the cards up above and in the description section below. And if you don't already have a simple compass, they're not that expensive. You can pick these up on Amazon. I'll provide a link to one that I would recommend below. Now, when it comes to maps, you definitely want to get a local map. And by local, I don't just mean getting a state map that you're in, but a map of your specific city and the surrounding areas. As you can see here, this is the area of the city that I actually live in. And you normally can pick these up at your local AAA office locations. And I would encourage you to have routes already marked in locations that you want to go to. It's best that you define alternative routes as the main roads that you probably will go to to your destinations are very likely to be blocked by heavy traffic if everyone else is trying to evacuate at the same time. Timing. Timing, it's everything. It's very likely that unless you have some way of determining an incident before it actually happens, you will be unable to beat traffic and there's a strong possibility that you might get stuck in heavy traffic depending upon your location, especially if you were to live somewhere like an urban or suburban environment. Now, having said that, by having your gear all ready to go at a moment's notice, you do give yourself an advantage of heading out while the masses are trying to get their stuff together. So being prepared not only ensures you're not caught unaware, but it also gives you the advantage to be able to move faster before everyone else. Remember, when every second counts, being prepared, it makes a huge difference. If for whatever reason you do not make it out before the masses, having alternative routes already defined in advance will be even more important. And I decided to go with a 4x4 for this very reason. And carrying bikes on the rack on the back of my Jeep, it also gives us other options if we have to abandon our vehicles. Remember, when disasters happen, having a plan A, B, and C is very important. You may have heard the quote from Mike Tyson, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Or you may have heard the military strategist statement, no plan survives first contact with the enemy. When approaching the concept of bugging out, you must be flexible. While planning is incredibly important, things will likely go wrong, but adaptability is going to be crucial. Again, I'll post a link to a video that covers the subject of bug out locations in more detail up in the cards above and at the end of this video. So be sure to stick around to watch that. Additionally, be sure to check out the bug out guide, which I'll post a link to in the description section below. If you have any feedback or any additional comments, please feel free to share this with the community. And as always, stay safe out there.